Well here we are in Chiang Mai, in the north of Thailand. Uh, we're actually in one of the suburbs of Chiang Mai, a couple of kilometres outside of town. It's a Saturday evening and uh, we're going to ride from, from this suburb uh, into town just to give you some, some idea of some of the traffic conditions, some of the things that uh, you may come across if you are going to be riding a motorbike here in Thailand. As I said, it's a Saturday evening so the traffic's not too bad. Uh, there's no after school traffic or um, after work traffic so it, it's not it's not too bad but you will see some things that uh, perhaps it's good to keep an eye out for some hazards that you'll see along the way I'll point them out you'll see some words come up on the screen um, and we'll have a little chat about them but the reason for this video is uh, there's plenty of written stuff out there on the internet forums and written information trying to describe what driving in Thailand is actually like and the traffic. Uh, Thais have a reputation with their driving so hopefully this will be able to give you some sort of visual uh, taste of what it's actually like. First thing you'll notice coming up here on the left is uh, a dog running out onto the road. Now I know this probably happens uh, in every every country um, and there's probably plenty of motorbike accidents related to hitting dogs. But dogs in Thailand are absolutely everywhere and they're basically allowed to roam free wherever they want to. So sometimes you'll see a dog on the side of the road, sometimes you'll see a few dogs just laying in the middle of the road, uh, literally just laying there. So it's really good to keep uh, your speed down in these sorts of areas just so that you're aware of built up areas where there's houses and uh, if there's dogs going to be likely running out, just, just slow down and keep an eye out because um, they are honestly everywhere. Now you may have noticed just before when I was talking about uh, the dogs there was a scooter uh, driving across the intersection there. She was actually driving straight through uh, on her red light and so she just continued, continued straight on. Uh, this happens all the time and it's not so bad when it's a scooter on the far side of the road close to the uh, curb but when you get a car or a truck racing the red light and it's already gone red and they're racing through to try and get through the intersection uh, just just to save a couple of minutes this can be a real problem and uh, I have seen a couple of really bad accidents happen exactly this way so it's a really good idea uh, just no, don't race ahead as the other cars and bikes will but just make sure that the road is clear before you accelerate across your intersection. You'll notice here something uh, I mentioned in my blog under safety regarding helmets. How many people are just not wearing helmets? The percentage uh, is probably more not wearing helmets than do uh, in the, with the Thai people. And um, I just don't physically understand why they do this, knowing how many people die every year uh, on bikes and uh, how many could have been saved just by wearing helmets. In fact, the other day uh, I saw something, uh, I saw a motorbike rider actually carrying his helmet in his left hand. Uh, he was struggling to ride the bike because he had the helmet in his left hand and um, I just thought, well, where is a sensible place to put that would be on your head. Some of them carry their helmets in their baskets, some of them carry between their legs um, and they just, some, some of them, one of the horrifying things you'll see is when you see a baby on the bike and uh, it'll be standing up between the two parents with no helmet on and either of the parents don't have helmets. So, quite frightening.
moment we're riding on the one of the major roads which goes right round the city of Chiang Mai. It's called here, it's known as the Super Highway. I'm comfortably sitting on about 80 kilometres an hour, uh, traffic being as it is on a Saturday night, uh, it's not too bad as I said. So I'm able to do that speed. Most of the scooters that you'll see on the side are sitting on probably about 60 to 70 kilometres an hour. So if you do come to Chiang Mai and you rent a smaller bike without the power to get in the outside lane, it's probably a good idea just to stick on the far left hand side and um, do about 60 to 70. Uh, the scooters will do 80, 90 kilometres an hour, but um, I probably wouldn't recommend it uh, if you're coming here. I'll be doing another video shortly, uh, exactly the same route that we're going on tonight, but with different traffic conditions. I'll do it uh, an after work, after school hour traffic, just to show you the difference between the speed uh, and how many cars and trucks there are. Notice just up here a little bit, uh, the traffic starting to increase, um, getting closer to town, and uh, you'll see a couple of things happen. It's quite exciting, quite crowded, uh, very quickly. Uh, just up on the left, you'll see a four wheel drive edging its way out. It's a good idea to just assume that he's just going to keep pulling out, so get ready with your brake and your clutch if you have one, and uh, get ready to stop or to, to veer off. If he's uh, if he's going to keep coming out, but then there's a car also on the right that I've got to keep an eye on. As you'll see, him just dart across. He doesn't have any indicators on. He probably has no idea on there. The lane he's going into is specifically for bikes. It's not even for cars. But uh, he just decided to come in there anyway. Now you'll notice me doing something that I mentioned in my blog, uh, weaving through the traffic. This may not be acceptable in, in other countries, uh, but here in Thailand, if you do so s carefully, slowly, and looking as you do it, it's uh, quite acceptable and it can be a very handy way to get through the traffic. Now just watch this black truck uh, up ahead pull straight off to the left and in front of the motorbike. Um, I don't know why he's pulling into that lane, there is really no reason for him to do that. Um, unless he's on his mobile phone or something, which um, happens all the time here. So just be careful of cars doing that uh, if you're on the inside. There's three people on a bike right in front here and um, you'll see just a little bit further down 
she'll put a the lady in the middle, or the person in the middle will put her hand out. Looks like she's waving or going to wave or something. Um, that's something interesting that they do here. Uh, sometimes if they don't have indicators or their indicators are broken, um, or they'll just do it anyway, they'll actually put their hand out and it looks like they're waving at something, but that means they're coming across or they're coming over and they, they want to turn that way. This is a good indication. Try not to get in an accident where you're going to need an ambulance or a rescue unit because uh, the traffic doesn't sort of seem to give way to these uh, to these emergency vehicles as you'll see here on the right. It's stuck in traffic and it's been there for quite a bit. You've probably noticed along the way in this uh, video, people sitting in the back of utilities or pickup trucks, quite freely just sitting there. And uh, this isn't against the law here in Thailand. Uh, people do this all the time in Australia where I come from. Uh, this is highly against the law and if people are caught in the back even in a reserve or a national park if you're in the back of a, a pickup truck like this there's very hefty fines for that. But over here it's just a very convenient way of putting a lot of people in one vehicle and getting around. You'll see on the left quite a few uh, what we call red taxis or they call them song towels uh, here and these are the very popular taxi and cheap way of getting around so lots of Thai people use them uh, and lots of foreigners use them when they come here as well but that is, as you'll see they pull over to the left to pick up passengers uh, this one in front's actually using his indicator which is really good to see uh, but these are, as I said, called song towers. Uh, you can read about it in the blog. I don't think she even looked. 